Apple announced new products and updated their operating systems at WWDC 2023. Charger Lab found Apple also listed a brand new 70 watts power adapter on its official website. We've posted the compatibility 100 watts test for this charger. You can click the upper corner to check that. And today we're going to take it apart to see how it differs from other Apple chargers we've taken apart before. The packaging continues Apple's design with the product name in the upper left corner. Let's tear off the sealing strip. Like always, it only contains a charger and some documents without any cable. Compared to the rectangular Apple 140 watts, it changed back to a square with rounded corners. The Apple logo is engraved on the front and is equipped with a USB-C port. All stacks in foam are printed on the side. It supports a inverter of 140 volts, 50 or 60 Hz, 1.8 amp. The maximum Apple voltage and current are 20.6 volts and 3.4 amp, exactly 70 watts. And the manufacturer is Cellcom. The model is printed on the other side, which is A2743. Like most Apple chargers, it also has a foldable input plug. You can replace different plugs from different countries for traveling around. This round metal block is used for grounding and fixing. Here are the positive and negative pins. The size of this charger is about 65 by 65 by 28.5 mm, and the weight is about 165 grams. Due to the GAN components, is slightly smaller than the previous 67 watts and is slightly larger than the Apple 30 watts. The Charger Lab Power ZKM003C shows it only supports PD 3.0 and DCP protocols. And it also has four fixed PDLs of 5 volts, 9 volts, 15 volts, 3 amp, 20 volts, 3.4 amp. The 20.6 volts is not the standard voltage of PD protocol, so it just shows 20 volts. Next, let's go ahead and use the cutting machine to destroy the outer case. Use the sponger to separate those two parts. The black thermal graphite sheet is pasted inside the case. The input plug is connected to the PCB module through black and gray wires. The solder joints are insulated with heat shrinkable tubing. The front and back side of the PCB module are covered with silicon pads for heat dissipation and buffering. The ground wire is directly connected to the round metal block. The black tape is pasted on the side of the PCB module for insulation. Disconnect the input plug from the module and tear off the black tape. A metal heat sink is wrapped on the right side. The fuse, common mode choke, transformer, and all capacitors are on the front. This is Apple's second GAN charger with a GAN fat on the back. Then let's introduce all components one by one. The input fuse is placed horizontally and longer than others. The safety X2 capacitor is from TDK 0.22 microfarad. Two common mode chokes are fixed on an insulating frame. 
The first one is wooden with flat copper wires, and the second one is smaller and is a toroidal coin conductor. The bridge rectifier is under this heat sink to dissipate heat quickly. Model is KBP408G, 800 volts, 4 amp. Those six electrolytic capacitors for input filtering are from Anshi. They were connected in parallel and 400 volts, 22 microfarad for each, 132 microfarad in total. Here is the differential mode choke, insulated with heat shrinkable tubing. There were three solid capacitors for output filtering. Two of them are from Kavaxon PX series, 270 microfarad, 25 volts for each. The middle one is from Nichicon, is also 270 microfarad, 25 volts, but is wrapped with tape for insulation. This electrolytic capacitor powers the mass control chip. It's from Anshi and is 25 volts, 47 microfarad. Unlike most chargers, the Planet Transformer is also black and is manufactured by Cellcom. The magnetic core is wrapped with copper foil for shielding. Two black white capacitors are soldered on both sides of the transformer. After removing all plugging components on the front, we can find some chips under them. The mass control chip is customized by Apple and marked with APSLC A01. We have seen this chip in many Apple original chargers. Flip to the back. This is a GANFET from GAN Systems. It adopts DFN 5x6 package and is the same model as the Apple 140 bots, 650 volts, 150 milliohm. The other two MOSFETs are from AOS and adopt DFN 5x6F package, but they have different models. The left one is AONS1R6A70, 800 volts, 1.3 ohm. The right one is AONS660A70F, 800 volts, 550 milliohm. The SMD current transformer is on the front, used to detect the current of the primary side for overcurrent protection. The magnetic core of the planet transformer is insulated by a plastic case. The EL1014 optic coupler is used to regulate the upper voltage. Then let's move to the synchronous rectification circuit. Its controller is marked with D92VJ, and the synchronous rectifier is from AOS and adopts DFN 5x6 package, 100 volts, 2.9 mL. The protocol chip is from Infineon CCG3PA2 series. It integrates a 32-bit M0 processor and has multiple protection functions. This is the Apple VBus MOSFET marked with 0336. The USB-C connector is connected to the main PCB. While well, as Apple's second gen charger, it's smaller than the previous 67 watts charger but with higher Apple power. After taking it apart, we found that there was no PFC circuit and the heat dissipation measures are pretty good. The internal design is very compact and most components are black which looks neat. Except for components from AOS, Nishikon, and Infineon, we also find components from new suppliers such as Anshi and Capexon. Ok, that's all for today's video. We'll test its charging performance very soon. Please don't forget to subscribe to us to get the latest update. See you in the next video. Bye!